It's a great day to be alive. Now you may be thinking about getting an analog mixer because you got some hardware gear and you want to incorporate it into your producing, but you intimidated because these things look scary. I mean, just look at this thing right here. This is a behemoth. All these faders, knobs, ins and out connections, twisties and turny things. It's a lot to understand, but I'm gonna break down how to use this mixer so you can be able to use this one and any other mixer. Mixers can be intimidating, especially when you see something like this. All these buttons, knobs, inputs, and outs. You don't know where to start. Well, the easiest way I was taught to learn it, if you know one, you know them all. So all the audio boards, analog audio boards, vary in how many inputs and outputs they have, but their setups are basically the same. So if we take a look at each strip, it's the same thing on each channel so once you learn one you know how to work them all let's start and break down the mixer if we start from the top you have your inputs now some of these inputs are on the top like this mixing board and some of the inputs and outputs are on the back it just varies on the different mixer but the first mixer channel is your mic preamp now this one looks different than this one so this first one can accept an XLR or a quarter inch jack. That's why they have the button below. You can select this and you can put, let's say, a guitar into this slot. However, on this microphone input, it's just the microphone input. So you only can do a quarter inch cable right here. So you can connect the instrument into this, but you would need a direct box to get the correct signal outage of the instrument. So going back to here, as I said before, we have the instrument slot right here that you can do on these mixer one and two. We have the insert jack and an insert means, let's say you have an external compressor or reverb, you can insert that into the chain. So it hits the preamp, insert, and follows the signal path throughout this channel. Now underneath that, now under this, we have a low cut filter. Now this is hard set. If you look on the mixer, it says 100 Hertz. So once you just click it on, it automatically just low cuts anything under 100 Hertz. Next, we have the gain knob. So you can bring signal into the board. Usually we set it at Unity, but it can vary depending on what kind of signal you have going into the device underneath the gain knob on this mixer we have a compressor knob so it's just one knob going to the right adjusts how much compression left no compression then in this section right here we have an eq section to shape the sound start with the highs on this board the highs is fixed at the hertz specified on this board so you can adjust it up or down for the mids they have a frequency range which is this white knob where you can change the range of frequency, then adjust it to how you want it. And we have a low, which is a hard fixed number on here. It says 80 Hertz. So that means when you adjust it, you're adjusting 80 Hertz on the low. The next section is what we call an aux. Now some mixers don't have an aux, but these have aux out. And this mixer happens to have three aux outputs. Now aux outputs just means auxiliary, means it's going to another source. So it can be uh, another monitor, on stage monitor, or it can go to a record, whatever you really want it to go to. There's no set rule. On this mixer, these first two are pre fader. And I know that because it says in the manual, so you might want to read your manual to see if these auxes are pre or post fader. And pre fader means if I have something playing on this channel and the fader is down, adjusting this adjusts the volume versus this aux, aux three, it has a button right here where you can hit pre and post fader. So post fader means it moves with the fader. So if the fader is down and I have this up, you will hear no signal. But as soon as I bring the fader up, you will hear signal that is post fade these are pre-fade, meaning you can have the channel down and adjust this like so. We have an effects. So this mixer has effects like delay, chorus, reverb, and you can just route as much as you want to the channel 
and each different channel as you can see has different effects so each channel can be affected differently under the effects we have the pan so you can take the signal left or right or keep it center under the pan we have a mute button so you can mute the channel on and off and finally we have the fader for the overall volume and also on this fader we have little routing switches which i will explain later let's go to the output section if we look at this make sure how it's arranged the full the auxes are on the top so you come out of the auxes and you got the fx here we also have a foot switch pedal which if you use an fx you'll hook up a foot switch and you can turn them on and off when you want to underneath the foot switch we have phones so you can listen to headphones and we have the subgroup outs one two three and four we have control room outs which can be another set of monitor speakers headphones whatever you want to be really there's no set room but no set rule but it's just called control room because it might want to be another monitors we have phantom power which this is used to power up microphones that need 48 volt power mostly condenser microphones dynamic microphones don't need them so if you need phantom power this is the button right here you have the meters to see how the signal jumping we have the fx presets so on this one you can see the bank of presets they have then we have the master control right here for the auxes this follows in line so this is the master for first channel aux second third here's the fx master for that we also have the amount of fx going to it on this we have a blend knob so you can blend a couple of sources in and out to the effects we have the control room volume we have the headphone volume we have this break button so we can quickly just mute all channels we have this button over here that sends this to the phones or a control room which is the effects so now we have the main outs we have an effects main subgroups one and two subgroup three and four and a main out usually the main out is your main speakers that you're going to subgroups one two three and four could be anything you really want them to be they could be a record source they can actually be another monitor it just depends on what you want to do and this is the overall fx in and you can see on the top they have little buttons that i can push in so i can route the fx if i push this in to subgroup one and two and subgroup three and four also with the subgroup i can do the same thing i can route the subgroup signal to left and right which is the master so whatever is coming in on the subgroup i can go out to the main so explaining subgroups if i just come over to the mixer bring it over on the side of each channel for this mixer you have different ways you can route the signal so let's say if we start right here number eight i want eight to go to number one and two i want nine and ten to go to one and two but I want 11 and 12 to go to 3 to 4, and I want 13 and 14 to go to 3, 4. So there go my subgroups. So if I have two signals, 8, 9, and 10, going to subgroup 1 and 2, I can control these separately. So if you got a separate room with monitors and you only want to hear those inputs, whatever it is, you will hear those on 1 and 2. And then the other ones selected, 11, 12, 13, 14, are on subgroup 3, and four so you can mix like that so let's say you have a couple instruments on one on these faders but you want to keep mixing all these instruments you want to lower the overall volume that's where you would use these different subgroups and on the bottom of each channel they have this little button pre-fade solo so you can hear what's going through the channel without having the fader up when you're listening through your headphones. That wasn't so scary, was it? Now that you understand the concept of a mixer and the breakdowns of how they're laid out, you probably can approach another analog mixer like this and pretty much know how to work any other mixer. But you might be struggling of how to incorporate your instruments and everything you have into your audio interface. Watch this video to help you set it up.